Hello everybody, so things should look a little bit different today, mostly because of this, my microphone and its new location as a result of a uh, microphone arm that I purchased. Uh, I actually, interestingly, only really ended up purchasing it because uh, I needed to get a um, Ethernet to USB or USB to Ethernet adapter, whatever the right way around is to say it. Um, and I saw one and it was really good and it had like all this other stuff as well, like, um, you know, other adapting elements, uh, like as kind of a package. And I was like, oh, that's great. But, and in a way this was good, it was below the minimum amount to get like the free delivery on Amazon. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'll get this too. And it wasn't that expensive and it worked, it's worked great. I would recommend it. Um, I wish I could, you know, tell you any details about what it is, but I don't know if you're in the market for a, um, one of these things, it, it worked for my microphone, like it attached. I kind of assume that most microphones might attach to it. Anyway, yeah, so that's that's that, a, a new thing. And I'm really into it. It makes me feel like a proper professional. And it's actually easier. Like I like not having just the microphone here because I'd always have to move my microphone kind of over my laptop. It just wasn't nice. Anyway, um, I haven't posted to this channel in a while. And that's, well, kind of, partially because I hadn't posted to my main channel in a while either. Um, but obviously there was a, a week uh, or possibly even two where I was posting to my main channel, but not to this channel. And uh, really that was just because um, I I was behind schedule on my main channel. So I was like, I can't throw this in two. But now I'm kind of like, well, I'm not as ahead of schedule as, as I'd like to be, but I'm recording this the day before this is due to go up. And then hopefully uh, on Thursday, I'll be able to record Friday's video and then blah, 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 you know. If I record a video a day and get back into that habit, then I'll be able to get ahead of schedule and then I can, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. Anyway, um, but with all that said, I'm not sure whether or not this is the best video to start. Like I'm like back after a long hiatus and I was kind of thinking, should I do something huge, like a big thing? Because obviously originally this was just going to be a video that I was planning on doing pretty much as soon as I got back, but technical difficulties delayed everything and all that. Um, so I don't know, uh, this isn't like some big grand video. It's actually quite a casual um, kind of observation point, whatever you want to call it. But either way, it's what I have decided to do. So I hope you enjoy. So here's my point. Prisons should be awesome. Kind of. Uh, they should be like much less morally complicated than they are, you know, because with prison, there's kind of like a debate around it, or it feels like prisons are kind of an issue. And I find that strange because prisons should operate on a very simple logic, which I'm going to lay out over the course of this video, which makes them just not really an issue. Kind of the way I'd almost refer to it is like obvious, like it's just obvious they should exist and obvious that they're not really a problem. Um, so whenever I hear people talk about kind of abolishing prison, uh, it's always very kind of strange to me because I'm like, well, prison shouldn't be a thing which anybody really like thinks about abolishing. Like generally prisons viewed as like a pretty bad part of like a society existing. And I would argue, yes, if you have a prison, you know, I'm not going to present anything so revolutionary as that prisons are intrinsically good things. But if you do have a prison, then obviously that's evidence that there is something wrong with society. Like people in the society are committing crimes and that's not exactly uh, a good thing. Um, however, the idea that prisons are like just this, this really intensely bad like blotch on a society like the fact you have prisons is just so terrible uh, i don't think makes much sense and i'm going to explain why so here's the thing social engineering is really good it's a very good thing uh, because you can encourage people to be physically fit and healthy you know, you can introduce things like taxes on certain unhealthy uh, items. And, you know, that that is a form of social engineering. You you obviously um, can mandate, for example, that the warnings are put on cigarette uh, cases. You, of course, I mean, another example of social engineering is you teach in school certain things relating to what's healthy. And, of course, also in school, there is uh, mandatory um, PE. You know, I think an example of um, uh, social engineering that I would support would be making it so gym membership 
is actually kind of nationalized because I think well, you want people to be going to the gym. There shouldn't be an, you know, because it's, it's a healthy thing to be doing. There shouldn't be like an economic calculation people have to make. It should just be like, well, there should be like a basic, you know, you have like the National Health Service, which is a basic degree of like healthcare for everybody. But what about people keeping themselves healthy? Maybe we should have a basic degree of that. Um, that's an example of social engineering, you know, encouraging people to be healthy by, in some sense, you know, uh, the government getting involved, the government being more of an authority. My laptop fan is being much louder than I would like it to be, uh, which is irritating. I, I don't know why, actually. Here's a side rant. Why the hell do laptop makers put, like, the, the fan vents on the bottom of the laptop? Because I swear, it used to be like, I've had many laptops in my time, and time was, every single laptop, the fan was on the side, which makes like infinite sense. But it seems like nowadays, it's just become a thing for laptop fans, or laptop vents rather, to be on the bottom. And that would just seem to so self-evidently be something that's just going to overwork the fan, give it like more issues, because now it's just having to like suck air in uh, from this relatively confined space between my laptop and my desk. Uh, not not a fan, um, and now it's making a noise, and I blame that entirely on the fact that the laptop vent is on the bottom. And the thing is, like, I mean, it would... Like, my brain wants to say, well, there must be a reason why they do it. But it just doesn't, like, just on the surface, it makes no intuitive sense at all. Another reason social engineering is good is because of people's mental health. You can actually force people to prioritize their mental health by social engineering. You know, um, you can also expand people's minds. Like, obviously, I mean, this is kind of like, I mean, school is probably the biggest example of social engineering. It's the thing that you have to do. Like the law says, you got to go to school. And obviously, it gives you an opportunity to actually teach people, educate people, um, to give people information, knowledge, uh, all that kind of stuff. And finally, of course, you can increase people's appreciation for the, the finer things. You can, uh, you know, stop people watching. Like, if you had a society with social engineering, you could be like, you know what? All of this crap on TV, the kind of like the neoliberal uh, capitalist model elevates because it just appeals to the lowest common denominator, you're just not allowed to watch it. You have to watch stuff of quality. It's, it's like, we're only going to show stuff of quality. I mean, again, the BBC and, you know, for example, well, PBS doesn't quite work because that's like publicly funded. But the BBC is a good example of where like there's this idea that it's you can't just show absolute crap. You have to actually have a semblance of quality there. Um and I mean, if you want a really good example of kind of the counter to that, I mean, obviously, so for example, you have the CBBC, which is the, you know, uh, government funded children's television channel. And it has like certain rules like um, about how educational the content needs to be. And what's interesting is you can contra contrast this to, uh, I know Folding Ideas has made a whole video on the growth of like the children's TV that, uh, or like the children's YouTube channels that are basically just purely driven by the algorithm and end up just producing complete crap, just the worst stuff ever. But like, it's just, you know, it's just driven by the algorithm. Um, and that's the thing, like that's, that's your unregulated paradise. Social engineering is let's mandate that some of this stuff is actually decent. Uh, you know, let's just not have it be uh, mindless colors and whatever else and like just noise and sound that's going to entertain the impressionable mind of a child let's actually make it so it's stuff of good quality whether it's educational or you know like um, good plot or some kind of artistic value whatever but here's the thing you know i said all of this and i've said you know social engineering is good and ultimately i think what we can agree is that a society where nobody had any freedom and um, a benevolent government was just in charge of everything would be good. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't have drawbacks, it wouldn't have negatives. 
you know, I think it's worth establishing that something is good before discussing the drawbacks. And I think a society with a benevolent dictatorship that just took control of people's lives, said, you can't do this, you can't do this, you know, you can't, you can do this, or in fact, you need to do this. Um, I've sometimes said before, as a bit of a joke, um, that I think that uh, everything should either be prohibited or mandatory, which is basically just my way of like um, outing myself as a bit of an authoritarian in some ways. I'm like, you know, it should either be prohibited or it should be mandatory. There's no like in between you choose. And obviously, yeah, like I say, it's a joke. Like I don't actually think that. Um, but it, you know, it's something I've said before. Um, but the thing is, obviously, the reason why I say that is because I think it's worth stressing that there is an intrinsic good to the idea of an authoritarian, benevolent government socially engineering everything. But there's a kind of flip side, isn't there? Which is freedom. You know, people like having their freedom. People don't like being told what to do. That's kind of like the whole point of, say, America. You know, America's whole thing, they get upset at the idea that somebody would regulate how big their, um, you know, glasses or cups of, of sugary uh, soft drinks, sodas should be, it's very offensive to them. Um, the idea that the government would try to have much control over things is very offensive to Americans. I'm sure they wouldn't like the idea of a government-funded uh, uh, TV channel that produces government-funded content. Um, yeah, Americans, they're very against it. But, you know, obviously, in general, you know, like... Lots of people are against it, and certainly to varying degrees. Uh, there is this idea that there is a balance. And to be honest, you know, yeah, what I actually support is a balance. You know, I, I like to razz everyone about the idea that I'm just an a unbridled authoritarian, but I'm not. I think that balance is good. Well, I just think it's worth stressing the very obvious benefits of uh, the authoritarian system. But obviously we need balance. But here's the thing, prison, in prison, losing your freedom is like the whole punishment, you would think. Like, that's kind of what makes it prison. You know, we live in, in a society where we have freedom. We have the freedom to do all sorts of things, to choose all sorts of things. But if you, say, misuse your freedom to do something illegal, that's basically, you know, you're misusing your freedom. You have freedom to do all this stuff, you know, you're not constantly being, you know, marched everywhere. You're not, you know, there's not some kind of authoritarian presence all around you. You have uh, a sense of freedom. But if you misuse that freedom, well, you, you lose it. You misuse it, you lose it. Um, and that's the punishment. And the thing is, quite obviously, this shouldn't be an intrinsically bad thing. Because, like I just laid out, freedom is a mixed blessing, you know? Uh, I, I will be honest, actually, I, I haven't mentioned this, but one of the reasons why I've been thinking about this is because I've been re-watching Malcolm in the Middle, and I'm still in, like, the bits where Francis is at military school. And it's kind of like, there's that idea of, well, yes, having freedom is good. But at the same time, I personally, and I think a lot of people kind of like think the idea of actually having a degree to which your life is regimented is, is not such a horrible thing. Like the idea of somebody, say, forcing me to go to bed at a reasonable time, forcing me to wake up at a reasonable time, forcing me to go out on a walk, forcing me to, um, you know, eat, you know, I don't know. Oh, to be fair, I eat healthy food anyway. I mean, admittedly, you know, I actually do usually uh, kind of do, you know, I like to think use my freedom to do the things, you know, good things. But the idea of um, being forced to do things, if those things are pretty obviously good for me, you know, somebody forcing me to meditate, somebody forcing me to spend an hour a day, you know, reading or um, forcing, you know, whatever else, um, that idea doesn't strike me as just like intrinsically terrible. Um, you know, there is that loss of freedom, which is bad, but it's not like this intrinsically terrible thing. You know, freedom is a mixed blessing. So actually the punishment of freedom or the punishment of the loss of freedom, the punishment that is prison, isn't, isn't necessarily terrible. And you could say it's almost an opportunity. And it kind of creates the question, why are prisons 
so bad? You know, why is it that prisons are considered kind of a a blotch on society? It's like a society with lots of prisons. It's just, oh no, they're prisons. They're not, they're not good. Ah, prisons. And it's like, how on earth does that make sense? Considering how, like I say, obvious the potential benefits to a society of strict social engineering, strict regimentation, strict, you do this, um, at this amount of time, you know, uh, basically almost if you like a kind of technocracy where the, um, you know, obvious truth of like certain things being good for you and certain things being bad for you can be enforced down on a population that we've all decided shouldn't have complete freedom anyway, shouldn't, you know, that actually losing freedom should be their punishment. The apparent benefits of that would seem obvious, you know, I mean, you can, in a prison, I, I would think, just ban alcohol, ban cigarettes, ban high sugar drinks. I mean, there is an argument for banning these things in the general society anyway, like banning alcohol. Alcohol is a terrible, horrible thing, which like is literally unambiguously a poison. Um, and just like it, it like numbs your senses. Like, you know, if you want to talk about something which should be an indication of a blotch on society, Maybe you could say alcohol is an example of that. Again, I'm not fully advocating for prohibition. I'm saying, like, you could make an argument for it, though. Like, let's not pretend you couldn't make an argument for prohibition. Um, and obviously cigarettes also, you know, not necessarily as mentally as uh, deleterious as alcohol, but definitely physically in terms of the health, terrible. Um, and you think to yourself, sure, surely we can ban those in prison, you know? Like... Considering the fact that, like I say, the point of prison is the loss of freedom, and that, like, even in when outside of prison, where we all probably think we should have a significant degree of freedom, you could still argue that these things should be banned. And to be honest, like, these things are taxed. You know, there is already social engineering to discourage use of these things. Considering all of that, when you're talking about a situation where we're already accepting people should be losing their freedom, why not? Um, do that anyway. Why, well, ra rather, why not use that um, loss of freedom to ban the things which obviously are terrible? You know, alcohol, high sugar, uh, cigarettes. You could, um, and this is something I've thought about a lot, put all prisoners on a totally vegan diet. You know? Because... The reality is, I mean, you know, there are several benefits to this. I've actually heard that apparently being put on a vegan diet, um, there, there was a school where everybody was put on a vegan diet and it it showed that behavior issues dropped. But you kind of think, okay, so let's look at it in a few ways. One, if we accept that actually being on a vegan diet, you know, meat's kind of pretty delicious. So it, it works as a punishment, but it's not like some horrible, inhumane punishment. You know, it's not like, a horrible, evil thing to do to somebody. It's not like fucking solitary confinement. Um, it's it's a vegan diet. You know, it's it's not like if I was forced to be on a vegan diet, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's not great. But um, it's it's not like a horrible, inhumane thing I've way. So it's actually a pretty great punishment to incorporate into prison. No, prison shouldn't be great. Like prison should have a punishment element to it because you've done something wrong. Um, you know, I, I do think prison should be partially punitive. Uh, you'll probably be able to tell by the end of this video, I don't think pun punitiveness should be the main goal of prison, but I think there should be an element of it being punitive. And with that in mind, saying no more meat, no more eggs, no more dairy, not nothing, fully vegan, not necessarily a terrible idea. I think at least it should kind of be like a uh, healthy, not so like maybe just chicken breast fish, possibly. But I mean, the other benefits, of course, are one, oh, sorry, two, the fact that um, I'm pretty sure it would be more cost effective because in the UK, I mean, meat's quite expensive because we don't have as much land to like grow uh, or rather like rear uh, livestock. Um, and then, of course, there's the environmental positives. You know, how many, um, uh, like increasing the number of people who are vegan has a positive effect on the environment. So why not like get prisoners used to a vegan diet? Maybe when they leave prison, they'll actually stick with it and you've actually helped the environment a bit. 
And also, I mean, there's the fact that it's a way to normalize being vegan in society. And of course, I do think while, you know, I kind of, oh, being completely vegan, um, it's, I definitely admit that like people need to be way more vegan than they currently are. And like the idea of going days on end without consuming any animal products would certainly be a good thing for society in terms of uh, dealing with some of the food security issues and obviously uh, environmental issues. So lots of positives to kind of like putting prisoners on a totally vegan diet. Um, and of course, also you can mandate, I mean, just kind of a, a, like a, a school you should be able to mandate like playing sports and, you know, working out, uh, just like mandate physical exercise. Again, you know, lots of people, they don't get their physical exercise, but, and that's obviously a bad thing. You know, it has terrible effects for the NHS that people are being unhealthy, but you can just like, again, at prison, you can just say, right, exercise time. And again, I think this might be something that's done already, but obviously it's something that should at least be kept. Um, and again, the ultimate point here is that what we have here is an example, okay, yeah, there is the punishment element, the loss of freedom, but you're using that loss of freedom as kind of an opportunity, an opportunity to produce, oh, you know, produce, I don't know if that's a weird word, but like facilitate healthier outcomes for these people, which just seems pretty obviously uh, positive. Um, and another thing that I just wanted to stress is that this also creates, um, and I wrote the word human experimentation, but not the evil kind in my notes. Um, but what I mean by that is like, and it kind of relates to the whole idea of like normalizing veganism. I, I would think you can also, given this, kind of see how things work out. You know, basically, for example, see what the effects of an all vegan diet are. And, but it, and not obviously, we know what the effects on an individual person are. I'm not, you know, it's not as if, you know, it's unhealthy. We know it's perfectly healthy. Um, but see what the effects are on like a society, you know, obviously prisons are different from just regular society, but like you can introduce things and like actually see the effects it has. And, you know, it could, it could easily be, I think the term might be a sandbox. I don't know if that's true. Um, maybe I'm using the wrong word, but basically a way where it's kind of like, actually considering like, obviously in society, like I say, you can't just introduce this very, um, intense social engineering just on broader society because of freedom. But you can introduce these things in like prison and see what the effects are. And maybe even like, you know, what? actually, yeah, it turns out that um, having, you know, this particular arrangement was seemed to produce positive results in the prison population. Maybe that's the reason why we might want to look into, you know, pursuing this particular thing uh, more generally. That's, you know, kind of, Again, just I think another kind of benefit where it's like actually the positives you might discover, you know, from the way that you handle people's loss of freedom in prison and what you decide to prioritize in terms of what they should be doing could extend to how you treat them or, or rather what policies you decide to introduce to society in general. And then, of course, you have some other obvious benefits, um, mental health. You can just mandate mindfulness meditation just like in prison it's like okay you get up you know imagine it's Shawshank Redemption but you know they come out like okay come out and then they just go into a hall and then maybe they get some like headphones and it's just playing some like relaxing music and it's just like okay everyone sit down for 10 minutes and just you know focus on relaxing focus on your mind um on your thoughts on your feelings blah blah, blah. like mindfulness meditation really good for your mental health pretty obvious why that would be a good thing to have in prison you can't force people in regular society to do that. You can't just say everybody needs to come into the main hall. You know, everybody in this community, you know, men with guns come around and they're like, knock on the door, come on, time for your mandatory man uh, mindfulness meditation. You can't do that in, in regular society. It just wouldn't be kosher. But you can totally do that in prison. Again, the loss of freedom is the point. Being told what to do is the point. But why not be, why not tell them to do something that's good for them? It just, it just seems weird. Um, and another point, why on earth doesn't everybody leave prison with a doctorate? Like, cause I kind of already mentioned the idea of like expanding your mind. That just seems like so obvious. Like, how is it that we've got people in prison and they're not coming out of it with university degrees? Like they're in prison. You can force them to do not anything, but they shouldn't have like total freedom. That's the point. 
why are you not like, why is there not like this really obvious system in Prism of like people doing online courses to get university degrees? I don't, I don't get it. Like if, if somebody does, you know, an armed robbery or something, they should be getting a doctorate at the end of it because they should be in prison for a decent while, armed robbery, you know, not a great thing to do. Um, not a good use of your freedom definitely should, should suffer the effect of losing some of your freedom. But while you're in prison, you've got no freedom. Why not just say, all right, here's your punishment. You're forced to read this book on whatever, computer science. Wow, this fan. It's worse today than it's ever been. And somebody's playing the piano. Oh, goodness me. I'm glad this is on my second channel because this is the kind of stuff I just wouldn't tolerate on my first channel. But there's no way I'm just going to power through because, you know, we're kind of towards the end. But goodness me, I mean, this is this is this is just a disaster in terms of background noise. I got my fan whirring away. Piano downstairs. It's just scales too. It's not even a nice, nice, um, tuneful thing. Anyway, um, yeah, I am just going to power through. Uh, I apologize for the piano. Um, and finally, so obviously, I I just want to stress like that that doctorate point. It seems like it should be a, a huge point, but it's just like it's so obvious. Like, how are you sending people to prison, and you're not saying like. You've got to learn to, you got to learn stuff. What, what the hell? Like they're sat around in a room all day, nothing to do. How are they not learning, you know, reading their Thucydides and learning about the Peloponnesian War? How, it, it makes, it's just like, it's so bizarre to me that it's just not like an obvious thing of like, yeah, you go to prison, you come out of a doctorate. Like, that should be just so intuitively obvious. Like, you've lost your freedom. You literally, like, the, the state is in a position over you where they can basically say, you know what, here's your punishment. You know, you, you don't get to, like, just decide what you're doing. Like, if, if I had authority over somebody, just to be like, you know what, I'm going to be completely in charge of your life. I'd be like, well, you know what? You know, I'd give them a little itinerary. And I'd be like, you know what? You're going to be reading. You're going to be meditating, you're going to be like, that's, that just seems like an obvious thing you would do if you had like complete control over somebody. You would make them do things which advance them and build them up as a person. That just seems so obvious. I don't understand how that's not just a obvious thing. Um, another thing, by the way, is like not, not watching crap. Like, I don't know what people are watching in prison, but I kind of reckon it's probably crap. It's probably like nonsense, reality, rubbish. Um, and it's like, or like soap operas. And it's like, why don't you just have like a film club in prison? Why don't you just have like people just watch like really good films? You know, like actual good films, like Coen Brothers movies or, you know, those really good movies from like the 30s, all of those good movies. Um, like you can't take it with you. Uh, or... I actually can't think which films are from the 30s and which films are from the 40s. But yeah, I mean, obviously Citizen Kane's a good example. Like, everybody should come out of prison having, like... And also, I mean, you know, not just uh, TV, but, like, the classics, too. Like, the classics of the Western canon. Um, again, it just seems like these should be things... And, you know, this is obviously, it's entertainment. It's kind of, you know, this is, like, the fun time. But it's, like, actually, yeah, have structured fun... Um, where it's like, you know, yeah, you're not going to get completely nothing out of it. You're at least going to check out some really good literature and media and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, just very strange to me that that's not part of being at prison. So now, after I've literally stopped my lunch to wait until the piano playing had stopped. Okay, guys, so totally honest confession here. When I went to go get lunch, uh, I had a sandwich and a crumb is on the corner of my mouth for the entirety of the rest of the video. I didn't notice it because it was just a crumb, but now I would feel weird not acknowledging it because it's very obviously just there. Let's talk about some drawbacks or potential criticisms of the fantastic reasoning I've laid out here, or I guess system I've laid out here. And the first thing would be enforcement. 
you know, because the reality is we're talking about people being forced to do things. Like, that's the whole point. The whole point here is that you lose freedom. So you're forced to do something. And you could ask, well, what if people just don't do it? What if they just refuse? And it, it kind of varies from place to place. But honestly, I mean, it's worth noting, first of all, that what we're dealing with here is not like people refusing to do it because it's a horrible, objectionable thing to do. They would just be refusing to do it on principle. Nothing I've mentioned here, or nothing of the things that could be refused to do, is actually something which it would make sense for somebody to refuse to do. So somebody could refuse to do the meditation, but to what end? They could refuse to do the sports, but to what end? They could refuse to watch the film. The things which actually are, you could say, a punishment would be the all vegan food, but, you know, they've got no option. It's eat, you know, they have to eat the food. Um, and honestly, if they like say, like, we're going to go on a hunger strike, that's not some brave principled stance. You know, people have gone on hunger strikes, before, which is brave and principled, but no, this is just, again, it wouldn't make any sense. It would just be, well, I'm just not going to do it because I don't like being told what to do. It's just a pretty lame attitude. Um, so that's that. Regarding like people sneaking things in, like maybe people would sneak prohibited food in or prohibited alcohol and stuff like that. I genuinely don't understand how it's possible to sneak something into a prison. And I think the only explanation is just that they let it happen, that they don't really care to regulate the supply of cigarettes and things like that, or which is, which is say prohibit and totally stop the supply of cigarettes. They just let it happen. And they obviously shouldn't. And I would say all you need to do is just monitor what goes into and out of the prison and don't let there be any cigarettes or alcohol or anything else in there. I don't think that should be that hard. Um, I will say specifically, you know, regarding some of the, um, you know, potentially disruptive things, uh, it's one of the reasons why I said like they get headphones with the mindfulness meditation. I think one of the reasons for that is because it would allow for the room itself to be totally quiet for people who aren't using headphones so they can see what's going on. There's signs going on. Again, I mean, it just seems like you just say, well, you know, you get removed from it. And it's kind of like what I would say is if somebody's being disrupted during activity, then you could maybe have like a solitary confinement system, but literally for the duration. I obviously think, you know, I'm not a maniac. I think solitary confinement is gross and inhuman. But obviously, you've got to bear in mind at the same time, like literally solitary confinement on a minor scale is literally what we do to little kids. You know, you send them to their room away from everybody. That's like the basic standard punishment for a little kid. Um, so it's not like horrendous to think you would do that for a small amount of time to uh, an, a, an adult. But obviously the point at which I think gets inhuman is when you're talking like, well, over 24 hours definitely of solitary confinement, I think is basically it's torture and no country should ever do that. Um, obviously, I also think physical attacks and anything like that is also completely inappropriate. But that's the thing. I think, to be honest, the great thing about this is like, you know, you talk about enforcement, you don't really need the enforcement angle because um, it's like nothing that's really being demanded is is actually deleterious to the well-being of the people involved. So I think ultimately they'll just roll with it. Um, but yeah, if you do have people who are just disruptive for the sake of being disrupted, just say, all right, you know, off to the hole with you for uh, for the duration of this activity. And once the activity's done, it's like, okay, you can do next one if they disrupt again. And, you know, yeah, basically that's how I think it would make sense to do it. Um, another problem. You could say, and, you know, this is a thing, aren't you just creating a system where prisons are literally better than outside of prison? Um, and I have three responses to this. Now, first of all, you could say, well, you know, you're talking about people getting doctorates from going to prison. So actually maybe some people would want to go to prison to get a doctorate. Like you're talking about a situation where people might be leaving prison better off than people who haven't gone to prison. But okay, I'll say this. I believe that prison, oh, sorry, that um, university should be free anyway. So that's all there is to that. Um, yeah, I, I think university should be free. So I don't think there should be any reason why anyone would need to go to prison to, you know, get this. Um, now, the, the other thing is like, well, most of the other stuff is things they can choose to do. You could say, well, you know, the idea of the meditation and the, the exercise and all of that, isn't it? Is that something people would want? It's like, well, people can choose to do that anyway. Now, it could be genuinely possible that for some people, because I already kind of said, like, I think 
the idea of, for some period of time, just having things be regimented actually is kind of appealing, you know? Like, I actually remember um, there was a, a guy who lived down the road from us, uh, an old house, who was um, ex-army, and he was kind of explaining how he's very, he's very um, organized. His house is incredibly organized. He's very, um, you know, anal retentive about these kind of things. Um, and he was explaining how, like, he, you know, all of the different things you had to do in the army in terms of just like making yourself look presentable and all of that, and like how it was all very kind of, you know, regimented, you had to stand it that way. And uh, both myself and my sister thought that, you know what, that's, that's kind of cool. You know, like that idea of just having everything like just so together that you could just actually meet those, you know, those very strict standards. Like obviously the standards themselves you could say are arbitrary, but it's like having like everything so organized, having everything so together that you can just meet that standard. Um, and, you know, yeah, the fact that he um, had everything kind of just so organized um, and again, just seemed to have everything all together, you know, very nice organized house and that. I was like, yeah, that's a good you know, especially, you know, I, I admit, like, my room is not as organized as it should be. I really need to work out where everything should go and, you know, make my room look considerably less of a mess. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's something, again, like, aspirational about that. So you could say, well, yeah, maybe people would want to go to prison just because that level of organization is is appealing. But then at the same time, here's what I think, though. If that was true, then, you know, people would join the army, you know, like, because the army, again has pretty much a similar thing going on. So I don't think that's really an issue. Um, and as for the third, well, the thing is, everything else is already an issue. Like, obviously, you could talk about, well, people getting free food, people getting free housing. Isn't that something which, if you're a homeless person, you'd, you'd want? Well, it's like, yeah, sure, but that's how it is in the current system. Like, you know, it's worth bearing in mind, this is just an issue no matter what. Um, now, the third thing is, people might say, oh, cost. Now, here's the thing. You may notice most of this wouldn't cost money actually. Like, this doesn't cost huge amounts more money than anything else. In fact, actually, I think it would save money, because like I said, I think vegan diets are cheaper. Um, but something else I've always wanted to point out, this is one of, like, the first beliefs I ever remember having politically, because it just made so much sense to me. I was like, shouldn't prisoners, or like prisons, just have allotments? And allotments, for those who don't know, are like vegetable gardens, basically. Um, they're usually vegetable gardens that aren't actually in your house. So... There are some allotments um, down the road from me in that direction. And it's basically vegetable gardens, which you can hire out and plant your produce there, grow it, all of that. How fab. Um, so I, I remember always thinking to myself, like, well, this is kind of nonsense. But I thought, to myself, well, wouldn't this be like a great thing for prisoners to do? Because they'd be getting their own food. It'll be healthy food. And also, like, isn't it just like a good kind of like in terms of mental health, in terms of being productive, isn't it like a good thing to do? Like, you know, I'm not talking about kind of that, you know, backbreaking going out and just like working in the farming sector, uh, just like picking one particular fruit all day, like, you know, like kind of fruit pickers. Although obviously I realize that's a job which needs doing and, you know, there's a whole other thing going on there. But that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about just like tending the plants, you know, like maybe, you know, basically working together, coming out of a system, like coming out of what you want to grow. You know, like basically the prisoners kind of obviously supervised, but kind of in control of it. Like, you know, actually they'd be there maybe with a farmer um, and, you know, obviously, you know, guards and all that. And they'd be like, okay, yeah, this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to grow this. And they'd be like, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to water it this many times. And, you know, they all have instructions. They'd come up with their system. Like kind of, I mean, sort of basically like an agrarian commune. Like, I just think, shouldn't that be what prisons are like? Shouldn't it just be an agrarian commune? That just seems kind of obvious. Like they're growing their own food. And again, it just seems like it would be a good practice to get into. Um, obviously, working in prisons is, is a complicated issue because on the one hand, yeah, you could say, well, we live in a society where people need to work to live. So does it make sense that prisoners, who are the people who should be being like, you know, punished because they have done something morally wrong? Um, well, not always, but, you know, assuming the laws are just, they've done something morally wrong. Um, should, should it be the case that prisoners are the one people who get to live their life without having to work at all? And yeah, you could say that's objectionable. Um, so obviously within that context, you're like, well, I guess they should do some work. 
But obviously you need to make sure that the work doesn't become, you know, they're in a situation where they're forced to do work. Obviously they need to be fairly compensated. To me, it's always just seemed to kind of make sense that they would be paid like the amount that a regular person's paid. I definitely think, yeah, the idea that prisoners should work for free or that prisoners should make money for the state by doing uh, free labor or labor, you know, less than a fair amount is that's modern day slavery, obviously totally gross, 100% against it. But yeah, I mean, I just think the cost issue, it really isn't that much of a problem. Especially things, again, apart from anything else, you know, prison is a public service in society, right? Like it's something that exists to deal with a problem in society. So it's not supposed to be for profit. It's supposed to cost money. The big question I find myself having, of course, is why are prisons so disorderly and chaotic? Because when you look at prisons in, in the films, it's 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 basically anarchic. It's, you know, mob rule. It's like these gangs that just control everything. Literally, it seems like an anarchic society rather than a authoritarian society. And that doesn't make any sense when you think about it, because these are the people who, again, like in theory, they should be the people who, you know, there is an authority over them and there is a limit to the freedom. Uh, but it seems to be the opposite. This is a place where actually like, you know, it just just might is is the rule and like the strongest people are just like able to beat up all the other people and all that kind of stuff um and the unfortunate thing is that i feel like um it might be intentional like i don't think this is incompetence i don't think that like because it should be so obviously easy to control people in a prison like that should be a really easy thing to do i mean i've already said that i don't understand how cigarettes can get into a prison when they should just be able to monitor what's going in and stop it going in if it's bad. Um, but I think that implies in, like, I don't understand these prison movies where, like, people get stabbed, people get beaten up, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, how? This is a prison. It's a place where, like, there's a huge number of people there, like prison guards, whose only job, really, is to just maintain order, surely. Um, and it leads me to the conclusion that it can't be incompetence. Because there's, it's just, it should just be too easy to maintain order. So I can only conclude that it's intentional as a way to make prison less pleasant, which is very unfortunate. And um, it basically means that you kind of have two competing views on what prison should be. There's my vision of prison, which is a place where you lose freedom as a punishment, but this loss of freedom is used to build people up. It's like, hey, you've lost your freedom, but we're going to encourage you to do positive things. We're going to have a very strict, regimented society where order is enforced, and that order is used to make better people, better citizens, better uh, individuals in general. Um, and then you have the actual system as it is, where prison is a place of anarchic disorder, and people are punished by the violence and fear created in this anarchic disorder. And that is used to break them down as a punishment, which seems so obviously like the exact wrong decision, the exact wrong way for prisons to operate. And again, it's not even like, there's not even an explanation for this. It's not even like, this is something where, you know, because obviously I could talk about all these things which I think would make society better. And uh, I can recognize how there's maybe a drawback to it, how it's like competing ideas and things like that. But in this case, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. The problem I have with like this whole abolish prison thing is that, to me, what should be the obvious logic of prison makes sense. It makes loads of sense. You misuse your freedom, so you lose your freedom. And then in that situation where your freedom is lost, then order is you know, an order is enforced, which will basically make you a better person. That makes like so much sense as a system. It just seems like such an obviously, like, it almost seems like a perfect system. It's like, well, we have freedom in our society, but you lose freedom. And with that loss of freedom comes the ability to build you up as a better person. It almost seems like too perfect that that just is how it, like such an obvious way to work it. And yet, and, and for all that reason, when people say abolish prison, I'm like, well, the logic of prison makes loads of sense. It's almost like, it's almost the best thing in society, right? Like almost everything else in society, there's some kind of trade-off, but not with prisons. The punishment angle 
and the building somebody up and you know rehabilitating angle work symbiotically. The punishment is losing your freedom. The way you build somebody up and rehabilitate them is what you enforce in terms of, you know, like regiment, um, in terms of the itinerary and, you know, the different things you say to do. It works perfectly together, which to me just seems like a great thing. It's kind of like, it's almost like people say abolish prison. I'm like, I wish everything in life could be as simple as prison. Like if, if all of politics was as simple as how simple prison seems to be, we'd have a pretty great system going on. Like imagine if a situation where both competing interests, the punishment and the rehabilitation angle, they work together. Imagine if that was the case with every other thing where it's like the two things, like, you know, let's say saving money and providing good service. No, it just, it just works together. Most other situations, the two kind of like different, there's almost always like two competing philosophies going on with a lot of like public services and they're in direct competition with each other. This is one of the few public services I can think of where the two things just work together. It's like, Oh, how lovely. That's great. Um, so yeah, the whole abolished prison thing, I'm just like, but prisons are the one thing in, in the world which should just be like simple and easy and make perfect sense. And there shouldn't be any reason to like have an issue with them. Um, but obviously the fact of the matter is that the way they're employed in our existing system, that isn't the case. Um, so yeah, I just think, I guess my message here is I don't think prisons are bad. I just think that like society is rubbish. And I think the fact that prisons are bad is evidence of how terrible society is, that our society is so rubbish and our political system is so terrible and just everything happening is just so, you know, awful that even something which should work perfectly should be the most perfect system in the world, the prison system, where the two different competing things work together perfectly symbiotically. There shouldn't even be, like I say, there shouldn't be a debate about prison. It shouldn't be a controversial thing. It should just be like, like someone commits a crime. This is what we do. Just so easy. And yet even that doesn't work. And to me, like, that's why I find abolished prison so weird. Because like for me, prison isn't like an intrinsically bad thing. It seems like a very good thing, like a, a logical system that works perfectly. And the fact it doesn't work is like evidence of how bad society is. So I wouldn't say abolish prison. I'd say abolish this society and replace it with a society that can at least get something as simple as prison to work. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the overall point of that was. I guess it was mostly just, yeah, if there was a big conclusion there, it was that I yeah find that the idea of like prison not working or being a bad thing to be really illogical. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and yeah.